Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I am back today with an Inspired Saturdays collaboration. I hope you'll stick around, see who inspired me this week and find out how you can go see how I inspired her. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. It's been a few weeks since I've been here with an Inspired Saturdays collaboration, so if you don't know what that is, I'll tell you a little bit about it before I get started. I like to team up with another crafty YouTuber to be inspired by each other. In our videos today, we will each make a new project based upon something that the other creator has made. Today, I am teaming up with Marie of Marie's Vermont Creations. I will have her YouTube channel and her Instagram account linked in the description box below. And what I'm going to be doing is taking inspiration from the set of cards that you see on screen now. I found this over on her Instagram account and was instantly inspired. Just a nice clean look to these. I knew that they would make a great quick card set. Now, I don't see a video here on YouTube about these cards. Marie, when you watch this, if you do have one, please link it in the comment section and I'll make sure to pin that to the top. Now, once you're done watching my video today, make sure to go see how I inspired Marie. I have her video linked at the very top of that description box below. One of the funnest things about this collaboration series is that each of us keep our inspiration pieces a secret from the other creator, so we are learning along right with you what has inspired each other. Normally, this would be the time where I say, hey, if you're a crafty YouTuber and you want to join me, blah, 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 fill out that application. But this is my penultimate Inspired Saturdays collaboration. I am going to try starting up a new series here on my channel where I will still be inspired by other creators and I hope that you'll join me for that. In front of me here are the main supplies that I'll be using for my cards today. If I do add anything when I start the process, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, pop those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. I have chosen inks and a stamp set from Gina K Designs. Now the stamp set is Holiday Tapestry, which is probably supposed to be for like winter holidays. But if you look at the original inspiration, up in the upper right corner she has that beautiful floral. Well I tried to find something similar and this is about the biggest pattern I had that I thought would look nice. So we're going to pretend like this is all season. For my inks, I chose Jelly Bean Green, Turquoise Sea, Passionate Pink, and Sweet Mango. I thought that made a nice kind of rainbow of colors, and I will be making eight total cards, two in each of the colors here. For my sentiments, I actually created a printable and printed these out on a medium weight white cardstock. Now, if you are a channel member, later today I will be sharing the link to this bonus printable on our community tab. If you're not already a channel member and you want to consider joining, I do have a link at the top of the description box. And if you're on a computer, right below this video should be a join button. It will give you information about the perks. And then in a few days, I'm going to be back with all of the details because channel membership is new here and I want to let you know about it. I did print out two sheets of that printable that I created so that I could yield eight cards in the end. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be cutting down my two prints. Now you'll want to make sure if you do have the printable that you print this at 100%. Some of the text at the bottom might get cut off, but you should still have some of your crop marks to go by. 
So for this first one, I'm going to line up the five and a quarter inch tall and you'll see my crop mark there. It goes with the cut line and I'm just going to slice that and then slice at another five and a quarter. For the next step, you'll want to make sure that your text is facing the same way. And if your trimmer will handle it, you can stack these on top of each other and then cut these down so they're four inches wide. A couple more things I wanted to point out. First of all, if you do print these, make sure that you use your printer's recommended settings for cardstock if that's what you're printing on. And even if your printer would cut off the crop marks completely, I have these lined up so the four cards are up in the top left corner. So you can just use the five and a quarter and four inch increments when cutting down. Now, if you are not a channel member, you can still completely make these cards. Just pick out your favorite set of stamps with some sentiment you like and add those to the bottom of the four by five and a quarter inch pieces. Next, I got out my Misty so I could set the stamp up once and stamp it eight times in the exact same place. I did go ahead and collate each of the sentiments so that I could mix and match those colors a little bit better. Normally, I would put my piece in the Misty in that lower right hand corner, but because I want my stamp to hang off the top and right edge a little bit, I'm not going to be able to do that today. So what I'll be doing is lining up the left edge of my card with the five inch mark on the ruler not on the grid mat because you know that can move around i do make sure it's at the five inch mark on the ruler before i do my stamping now once i have the stamp in place where i think it looks good i'm going to place my magnet down pick the stamp up with the door of my misty and then ink that up very well now this is a brand new stamp so i rubbed my hands over it to get any manufacturing oils off there and then i inked it up with the first color now this is again a new stamp and because it's pretty big and there's a lot of coverage needed I went over it with my little pressure tool but I did miss a couple spots so I just re-inked it up and then did it again and with the misty it's going to ensure that it's going to stamp in the same exact spot I pulled in that next card to stamp the image on and I did make sure that once again it was lined up right at that five inch mark on the ruler. I inked up and stamped a couple times just to get a nice solid image and then it was time to clean up and move on to my next ink. Now normally I don't really clean the background of my grid because stuff doesn't usually fall off but for today's cards I did and I also brought in a little piece of paper towel to dry that off because I wanted to make sure when I put the new card down that the background wasn't wet and then would ruin my card. Once everything was clean and dry, I moved my blue ink off to the side, I brought in a new card to stamp on, and then I proceeded to stamp two pieces in each of the remaining three colors. Now while I work on that, I thought this would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. These are just fun little questions I like to ask my viewers to learn a little bit more about you and then share a little bit more about myself. Today's question is, pastels or brights? Which do you use more in your crafting? If you are gonna take the time to answer, which I love to see those, please make sure to include the hashtag hashtag QOTV so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. For myself, I think I lean a little bit more toward the brights side. That very first blue I used is one of my favorite colors and I found here recently too that I've been enjoying some oranges and bright purples when I craft. And it seems like when I try to use coloring mediums that I think are gonna go from a bright and kind of fade out to a pastel, it never seems to work out that way and they always stay a little bit brighter than I thought. But in the end, I'm usually happy with my creations, so maybe I'm just a brights girl. Once all of the cards were done, off camera I did a little experiment. 
Lately, I have been trying to either decorate the inside or add something fun on the envelope. So I tested out one where I stamped that same floral on the left edge of the envelopes. And I really ended up liking it. So I did decide to go ahead and stamp all eight of those envelopes. Once again, two of each of the colors. Because these cards are super clean and simple, I wanted to add a little dimension by popping each of my stamped pieces off the card bases with foam tape. So I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarter inch width and I put three strips across the back of each card. Now if you've been watching me for very long, you see these big blue rolls of foam tape all the time. And the other day I got a good question that I thought I would just let you all know about. I had a viewer ask me if these rolls were expensive. And it's kind of a yes and no. The rolls themselves are a little pricey to buy, but if you would like calculate the cost per square inch of foam tape, this is definitely your better bet and you get more bang for your money. A couple things I like about these rolls is, I do use non-stick scissors, but it doesn't gum them up. I have bought cheaper foam tape in the past off Amazon, and my scissors could barely cut through it. The foam tape was sticking to them like glue, and I found this makes nice clean cuts. Another thing is, as long as you burnish or you rub your hands across that release paper on the back, this really does come off pretty easily. I know again, some of those tapes, it takes forever and a day, it seems like, to get the release paper off the back. If you're interested in pricing some of this tape out and seeing if it's maybe for you, I will link all three sizes that I own in the description box below. Once again, what I'm using today is the thickest width that I have, and it is three quarters of an inch wide. Now it's time to get the stamped pieces put onto card bases, which I did cut and fold off camera. Now this tape, among all of the other positives that I just told you, is also nice and sticky. So you'll want to make sure that before you press it down really hard to get a nice good seal on that adhesive, that you make sure that you have it lined up nicely before you do that. Make sure all your borders are even because to pull it up, you might ruin your stamped piece. Now, sometimes I will adhere it like I just showed you straight up, but other times I tend to rotate it so the top is toward me. You can always do that and see what works best for you and your technique or your crafting style. I finished putting all eight cards together and here's a close up look at those finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's quick and easy card set. Don't forget, if you're a member, you can download this printable for free in the member community tab. Now make sure that you visit Marie's video. Once again, it's linked at the top of the description box below. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.